Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Francie and I'm so excited. We are here, we've made it to favorites and non-favorites season. This is a series that I do twice a year. I do my first one in July, talking about all my favorites and non-favorite reading material for the first half of the year. And then in December, I do the entire year. So we have many, many, many favorites and non-favorites to come out in the month of December. If you have not already, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell, hit the all button so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a new fave and non-fave for the end of 2023. Can you believe we're at the end of the year? I... Kinda can and kinda can't. But anyway, lots and lots to talk about. So the first cap off the rank is DNF'd books. So I'm going to talk today to you all about the books that I DNF'd this year. For those of you who don't know, DNF is an acronym that stands for Did Not Finish. You pick up a book and for whatever reason, after getting to a certain point in the book, you decide that you no longer want to read this book, so you put it down and don't plan on picking it back up again. Again, it's important to make a distinction between DNF and shelve. If you put down a book and don't plan to pick it back up again, then you did not finish. It's a DNF. But if you put the book down and plan to pick it back up again, even if it's months and months later, we call that a shelve. You've just shelved it for a while and you'll get back to it at some point. We will talk about some shelves in just a moment. But to start with, the main purpose of this video is me talking about all the books I did not finish. I put them down, I don't plan on going back to them, and more importantly, why? So, <laughs> let's jump right on in. So the first book that I DNF'd, well, we're starting in the first month of the year because I DNF'd it in January. What a great way to start the 2023 year of my reading than doing a DNF right off the bat in the very first month. Okay, so that book was Furthermore by Tahara Murphy. This is a middle grade fantasy kind of question that one there, but I have now confirmed. Yes, it was a middle grade fantasy that I picked up. I had been looking forward to reading the in the duology of this series, book number two being Witchwood, to the point that I actually purchased both books before I picked up book number one. So DNFing book number two unfortunately meant that without book number two, there ain't no point picking up book, uh, without book number one, there ain't no point in picking up book number two. So I DNF the duology because I DNF book one. I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, let's talk about why. Okay. Furthermore, by Tahara Murphy, it was just too immature for me. The main character puts down other characters, calling them stupid all the time, and overall, I found it quite boring, and I was easily distracted. So, let's take some time to actually unpack that, because if I was doing a monthly wrap, that'd be all the time that I'd have to talk to you about the book, but I have more time in this video, because we're talking about why I DNF'd each book. So, let's unpack each part of this. So, First of all, it was just too immature for me. Now, you may come back to me and go, Mr. Francie, aren't all middle grade books going to be too immature for you, considering that you're an adult? So, isn't it pointless you picking up a middle grade anyway? And my response to that is, no, no. I've read some amazing middle grade books that I've absolutely loved and that my inner child absolutely celebrated. Sometimes middle grade books can be uh, on the younger end of middle grade. Sometimes they're on the older end of middle grade. And I'm pointing out this distinction because there are times where I love books that are on the younger end of middle grade. And I love middle grade books that are on the older end of middle grade. So when I say that a middle grade book, in particular this one, is too immature for me, I mean it is just too immature for me. These are things that little kids might do in a book that I just 
I just can't deal with how immature it is. And you may come back to me and say, well, Mr. Francie, but kids are kids and they're going to do what they're going to do. And that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But sometimes it can get a bit too annoying. And I've read so many middle grade books that I absolutely love where the kids aren't immature. So I don't feel like the argument of middle grade books are meant to be immature is going to work for me because I mean just look at for example the first three books in the Harry Potter series these are middle grade books if you didn't know the first three books in the Harry Potter series Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets and Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban are middle grade books they do not read as immature and then I have a host of other middle grade books that are on my bookshelves that I did not DNF because they do not feel immature so if I'm reading, and but I have to say here, I, the same argument for me goes for YA, young adult books. If I pick up a YA book and it's immature, I'm probably going to DNF it because, again, I just don't like immature books. They just don't work for me at all. You don't need to have a book be immature because of its uh, age rating if it's not an adult book. So there you go. But my next point that I made was that the character, the main character keeps calling other characters stupid. Um, you know, it keeps calling them um, stupid all the time. And first of all, I don't like that word. If you're going to use the word stupid, I hope that it only comes up once or twice or a maximum of three times if it has to. But I just don't like the word stupid. So I feel like it is incredibly degrading and also incredibly unnecessary. We have so many words we can use in the English language. So to hear the word stupid to me. I just don't think it's necessary. But also, if you have a main character who is constantly calling people stupid, it's not only going to upset me that, that they're constantly calling people stupid, and I don't even know this character, so I don't know why you're calling them stupid, but also it annoys me because that's the only word you have for them. So that's going to let me down on both sides as well. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I found it quite boring. Yeah, I just wasn't enticed by the time I put it down. So, yeah. And uh, it goes hand in hand with my final point, which was I was easily distracted. Yeah. If I'm reading a book that I'm into, let me tell you, I am not going to be distracted while reading that book because I'm so zoned in to the book that it's as though the rest of the world has evaporated around me and I'm literally inside the book walking alongside those characters as they're doing whatever it is they're doing in whatever genre, age rating, world, book that book comes from. But if I'm distracted from the book, uh, then clearly I'm not interested in that moment because my mind is wandering. But if I'm constantly being distracted, then it shows the book overall is just not enticing for me. And I was very easily distracted with this one. So there you go. I spoke a lot about Furthermore, we'll move on. But yeah, I DNF'd Furthermore, and because of that, because it's a package deal, Westwood was also DNF'd, even though I never picked it up, because it's part of the duology. Now, in January, I also shelved a book, which is this book, Beneath the Sugar Sky, by Shannon Maguire. So... I started reading this book. This is book three in the Wayward Children series. I loved book one and book two, but I wasn't enjoying uh, book number three, uh, Beneath the Sugar Sky. And at the time I was reading the C Campers and Criminals series. I wanted to continue on with that. So I had just finished book one in the Campers and Criminals series by Tonya Kappas, and I wanted to pick up book two. So I decided to shelve uh, Beneath the Sugar Sky and pick up book two in Campers and Criminals. The thing is, I feel like even though this was listed in January as a shelf, beneath the sugar sky that is, I feel like I am going to be upgrading it to a DNF because I'm just no longer really in the mood for the Wayward Children series. I don't know. We'll see how things go. I may end up unhauling it. If I don't, I'll get back to it one day, but I don't feel like I'm getting back to it anytime soon. I don't feel like I'm going to be getting back to it in 2024, to say the very least. Um, so yeah, we'll see how things go. But technically in 
January was marked as a shell, so that's why I'm saying it as a shelf here. No DNFing in uh, February, but I did shelve a, a book, and this shelf has been upgraded to a DNF, so we're now going to call it a DNF, we're going to call it what it is, and that is this book, Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner. Okay, this was simply a case of no audiobook available for me, so... When I initially purchased this book, I always cross-check every time I purchase a physical copy of a book, because I want that physical copy for my bookshelf, but I always cross-check to ensure there is an audiobook available for me of that book, because if I would prefer to not physically read and instead listen to the book so I can work on my crochet blanket, I make many crochet blankets throughout the course of the year, I'm currently working on a Christmas one. <laughs> but yeah, I, I make many crochet blankets throughout the year, so if I much rather listen to the audio book and crochet, I want that option to be there for me. At the time when I ordered Your Welcome Universe by Whitney Gardner, the audiobook was available. By the time I got to it in February, the audiobook was not available. I don't know why I said that I shelved this rather than DNF'd it, because I think I was pretty sure at the time, even, even at that time when it happened, that um, when I decided to not pick it up because of the fact that there was no audiobook, that I had DNF'd. So we're going to call this a DNF despite the fact that I have it labelled as a shelf. It is a DNF. If it's not available on audiobook, then I just don't want to take the risk of starting to physically read it and then no longer being in the mood or no longer being able to physically read and wanting the option to have the audiobook. If the audiobook's not there, I feel like then I can't consume that book. That's just how it works for me. Everyone is different. Okay, so in March, I DNF'd one book, and sadly, it was the final book in a trilogy that I was not only reading, that was not only on my SAS list, uh, which is a list, a series about series list, we'll get into that in, an, in another video, but I was also buddy reading this series, and it was the final book in the series, but I DNF'd it because by this point I had had enough, and that is this book, Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare. So the reason why I DNF'd it was because this series was just just not for me. I, so, okay, this is a, oh goodness, I have to think now, YA fantasy series. I would probably actually call it a YA historical fantasy series. So, Cassandra Clare has written a lot of books in her Shadowhunters universe, and the main series is the Mortal Instruments series. I did overall like that series. This um, series is the Infernal Devices series, and it is set way before the main series. And I'd already read the main series before picking this one up. To me, by comparison, the uh, Infernal Devices series was very boring for me. What kept me going through book one and two is I was really enjoying getting to know one of the main male characters, Will. The more I read about Will, the more I became fascinated by his character, his backstory, his growth throughout the series, and so that definitely kept me going. But when I'm reading a fantasy book, there are two uh, elements, or two polarities, I guess, one polarity, two differences in a fantasy uh, of any series, and that is that there is a side that fights for good and a side that fights for evil. What works for me with fantasy is if the evil side is a formidable foe. <laughs> in this particular case, I found the evil side to be incredibly boring. They were these little teeny tiny teeny tiny tot of a <laughs> robot. <laughs> little, 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 little robots that really weren't scary. And seriously, if you stepped on them, you could smash them. How is that an evil foe? I don't know. So when I pick up a fantasy, I'm picking up a fantasy for the fantastical elements. First of all, I don't get how uh, robots are fantasy. They may come under the massive umbrella of sci-fi and fantasy, but for fantasy on its own, it didn't make sense. But also, they didn't feel like a threat to me. I refer back to the Harry Potter series. Lord Voldemort, who is the evil uh, antagonist, the 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 the, you know, the big evil, the big bad in Harry Potter, is a worthy foe in that series. Love Voldemort, hate Voldemort. He is a worthy foe. These infernal devices were not a worthy foe, and the characters were acting as though they were, and it just really annoyed me. Yes, I understand if you've read the series that Mortmain is a part of it as well, but Mortmain is very much off the page for the majority of the series, so the immediate threat that we face is these little teeny tiny teeny tiny tots <laughs> of 
of um, robots that didn't work for me. So ultimately, even not even Will could keep me going. So I DNF'd that book, and therefore, uh, in my mind, I finished out the series, but I finished out the series without actually finishing the final book. Good news, everyone! I did not DNF anything in the months of April or May. So my next DNF came about in the month of June, and... Sadly, the book that I DNF'd was a dystopian, and I love my dystopians, so it takes a lot for me to DNF a dystopian. We'll talk more when we talk about the books that were on, the series that were on my SAS list, because I had two dystopians on there, one of which I think I only got as far as I did because it was a dystopian. So that's how much I love and respect and just enjoy overall my dystopians. So it takes a lot for me to DNF them, but this one... I didn't feel like I had a choice. I needed to personally DNF it. And it was called Under the Never Sky by Veronica Rossi. Okay, so let me tell you the reason why I DNF this book was after an hour in of reading this book, I still didn't know what the heck was going on, okay? Like, how can you not know what is happening after an hour? Stormlight Archive fans, I picked up The Way of Kings many years ago, and even by the time I got to the end of that 1,000-page book, I still didn't understand the magic system, which annoyed me as I was reading this very long book, but I knew what was going on in the world. In this book, after the first hour, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I couldn't make heads or tails of it, and it was just really, really annoying me. And as much as I love my dystopians and want to read as many dystopians as I can, I, uh, the dystopian genre is placed into a very high reg- held in a very high regard for me, but after an hour of consuming a book and you still don't know what's going on in this world, I mean, for me, that is a enough for me to say I'm DNFing because I, I'm confused after an hour. Like, really? <laughs> Come on. And it's a YA dystopian at that. I haven't read at any adult dystopians yet. So for uh, the age rating of YA, you need for it. I, I don't mean to say you need for it to be so simplistic that a baby can understand it. But for YA, it needs to be simplistic enough for teenagers to understand what's going on. If I, as an adult, am confused after the first hour is up, then good luck to teenagers reading this book and trying to work out what in the world is even happening here. And it's not, you know, for example, picking up a mystery or a cosy mystery or a thriller and trying to work out what has happened with regards to the mystery. No, this is a dystopian where the number one thing that is king in a dystopian is building up the world, all of that world building so that we know, yes, I'm going to say the words again, what is going on. We want to know, at least within that first hour, we want to have a rough idea of what has made this world a dystopian world. And if you don't know that after the first hour, then I'm really happy for you if you can keep reading, but for me, I just couldn't. <laughs> so it just wasn't very inspiring. It wasn't inspiring me to go any further, and I ended up replacing uh, that entire series because I was going to read the um, series that that is book one of. I don't remember the name of it, and I replaced it with another dystopian series so that I could get another dystopian series read. But this one just was not for me. My next DNF came about in the very next month, which was the month of July, and it was this book, Shutter Island by Dennis Lahane. Okay, this is going to sound very lame, but here we go. Here's the lame reason why I DNF'd it. I wasn't vibing with it. So I was really looking forward to it. It looked really interesting. I don't read premises of books before I pick them up. I uh, So I was not only going off the cover, but I was trying to find some thrillers that I thought would be really intriguing for me. And just going off not only the cover, but I had come across this list of amazing thrillers thrillers that people love. And so I thought, yeah, sure, I'll add it to my TBR and see what my thoughts are. And honestly, I just wasn't vibing with it at all. I think I made it an hour into this one as well and just went, yeah, look, I just... 
I, I, I'm not enjoying it. I'm not liking it. There's nothing that's um, you know, incentivizing me to keep going at all. And so I ended up going a step further because I purchased the book. So I wanted to try and get my money's worth and not just read an hour of this book. And uh, so I looked up the synopsis of the book. It didn't intrigue me. I looked up the synopsis of the movie because they've made a movie about it. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll watch the movie because it starts Leonardo DiCaprio, who I used to love as an actor back in the day, maybe that will inspire me to read the book, to pick it back up again, because long story short, uh, in 2020, I DNF'd The Great Gatsby twice. Uh, after the second time of DNFing The Great Gatsby, I watched the movie, hoping it would influence me to want to pick up the book. It didn't, but that was my goal. I watched the trailer for Shutter Island, and I just went, yeah, no, I'm glad I've DNF'd this now. I can't if I wasted this much time, none of what I'm seeing in this trailer looks like I'm going to enjoy it at all. <laughs> so it cemented my decision. So I tried, I did a lot of things to try and keep going, but it just was not the book for me and there was not enough in, um, enticing me to keep going. So there you go. Good news is, in August and September, I did not DNF any books, but in October, I DNF'd two, so I kind of made up for it. The first book that I DNF'd in October was The Troop by Nick Cutter, and so this is an adult uh, horror. And I've been wanting to read this book for three years. It, um, all I knew about it was that it involved, um, it was like a body horror and it was extremely gruesome. Now, some people are probably going to be turned off just hearing those words. But for me, when I pick up an adult horror, I want the horror to go there. I want it to be full on horror because otherwise, why am I picking up the book? Very, very quick backstory for you all. When I was younger, I tried to watch the original Saw movie and I found that I had a tough time watching the film, and so I thought a great compromise for me would be to read horror books, since I struggled to watch the visual, to, to consume the visual medium of horrors. So I started finally reading horrors in uh, March of 2020. I started this channel in January of 2020, so to expand on my genres in March, I started reading horrors, and I, I, good horrors for me are very few and far between because for me, being that they were the compromise to the visual back in the day, for me, not anymore, I can now watch horrors and I've, I'm completely up to date with the Saw series, by the way. I've even seen Saw 10 and I now love the entire Saw series. So yeah, I've moved on. But whenever I pick up a horror, I want it to uh, creep me out, freak me out, conv convince me to leave the light on, convince me I'm going to have a nightmare, stuff like that. I want it to be an ad adult horror and not an adult contemporary that might have a dark moment here or there. Do you get what I mean? So when I picked up this book, having heard that it is uh, it involves um, bodily horror and that it is very grotesque, I thought this is going to be exactly what I want. I can't believe I've waited three years to give it a go because I first heard about the troop three years ago and uh, I'm finally going to consume it. I DNF this book because the writing style was way too over the top. It, you know, I didn't even make it past chapter one because the sentences were way too much. Like, seriously, if I'm having to work to understand what you have written, no matter what the genre is, it's going to take me out of the book. So I am definitely not a reader who reads for the writing style. I am a reader who reads for the entertainment of the plot. And so if you're going to give me a really complicated writing style, it's going to pull me out of the book. But also, in this particular case, being that it's a horror, if you're going to write with an overly complex writing style with a horror, you are not allowing that main genre, that is horror, to shine. Because what's shining is the overly complex writing style. This just did not work for me. And as much as I was eagerly anticipating this book, I DNF'd it because I knew I would not be able to focus on the horror because I would be too busy working to translate every single sentence in this book. So I DNF'd it. 
And the final book that I DNF'd, again, I DNF'd this in October, was Black Chalk by Christopher J. Yates. Okay, so this was an adult thriller about a game. I love games in my thrillers. I mean, I've mentioned the Saw movies, and a lot of the horrific elements revolving around Saw is Saw wanting to, in their mind, quote-unquote, play a game. So I love games in my horrors, in my thrillers, because because I am someone who grew up wanting to be a an anthropologist. An anthropologist, in case you don't know, is someone who loves to study human nature. What makes a human tick? What decisions will humans make when they're in certain situations? So the idea of a horror or a thriller film or book either medium that involves a game is definitely going to intrigue me because even though it's fictional, I want to see how this fictional character is going to respond and what they're going to do when they're placed in a situation of a game that they may not necessarily want to play, how they're going to respond. So I was very intrigued by um, the setup of Black Chalk because it was about a game. My problem was that the first 80 pages was not about the game itself. The, I got 80 pages in, the game hadn't even started. Instead, what was happening was we were planning the game, and that did not work for me at all. I don't want to sit there watching you plan out your game, because then I'm going to know what to expect once the game begins, and it kind of takes away the surprise of what the game is for me. So I think Christopher J. Yates would have been better off releasing a prequel novella that went for, say, a hundred pages with the protagonist planning the game in the novella for those who wanted, and then in the main book, we just get the game. But it just wasn't working for me. After those 80 pages, we were still planning. The game itself it s it sounded rather boring to me too. So not only was I not enticed because we hadn't started the game after 80 pages, but the game that they were designing did not sound intriguing to me, so I DNF'd it. All right, but those are all the books that I DNF'd or shelved or shelved then upgraded to DNF'd in 2023. Just to update you, I have read my entirety of my November TBR and did not DNF any books. And in my December TBR, I'm mainly doing rereads, but even if I DNF a reread or one of three new books that I'm reading in December, they don't count towards my favorites and non favorites of the year. So my favorites and non favorites to qualify need to be read between January and November. So that is it. That is your complete list of January to November 2023 DNF'd books. Did you DNF any books in the months of January to November in 2023? And why? Let me know in the comments section below. Did you read any of the books that I DNF'd? Did you DNF any of the books that I DNF? Let me know that too. Let's start a great discussion in the comments section below. There are so many more favorites and non-favorites to come. So click on the uh, subscribe button, click on that bell, hit the all button so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a new favorite and non-favorite of the year. And until next time, have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and I'll see you in the next favorite and non-favorite. Bye everyone!